What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 259 of Opinions May Vary. I'm your host, JR. I have my co-host with me, Alex. Hello. Joining us this week from all the way on the other side of the country uh, is uh, our pal Jeff uh, from Penny Arcade. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on yet again. I, I, look, I'm going to be honest. I After I was on last time, I'm surprised you did so many more episodes. <laughs> I Jeff, thought for we sure had... I would have been the, the death nail in your coffin. If anything, it would have been, well, it's probably not going to get much better than that <laughs> but so <laughs> it was a lot of it was a lot of fun last time and um you made the mistake of saying yeah i'll totally do it again in the future oh. and then i was like okay well <laughs> yep. gonna hold you to that then, then you went and emailed me that's all right <laughs> i like i like doing press but Plus, um, now we have the added benefit of uh it being late enough in the evening that i was able to come home and throw on sweatpants which is a lot more comfortable <laughs> than when i was on your podcast last time. Right, Not right. That your viewers care what I look like. But <laughs> your, your listeners. They should, damn it. But um, yeah, they can they can they can look at old PATV series episodes or uh, catch us on our our new more active almost daily stream every once in a while now. Which you made a guest appearance on today, right? Oh my goodness, I did. I, <laughs> I was not planning to. I was unshaven and unkept. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the the so today's show is normally Gavin and Dave. Uh, I think they what do they call it the because they're millennials. I think they call it the Millennial Falcon Show or something like that. I, yeah, yeah, that sounds about um, right. But Gav was working from home today, so Dave comes into my office literally two minutes before he's supposed to go on. He's like, "Will you sit in?" <laughs> I I and, guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, I. I've been asked to be on several streams, but I've been so busy lately. He just he happened to catch me at that perfect moment where I was waiting for something else. So I had time to jump on. It was fun. I I'm gonna try to do it a little more often now that my workloads well, I, it's inside baseball. Now that I've got things in a situation now where I can <laughs> take an hour in the middle of the day to go do that every once in a while. Is that something that like you have to Cause like you caught, is that like training right there? Like, cause like I feel if I was given privileged information, I would just blurt it out <laughs> at a moment's notice. And like, just like, is there like a train? Is just, it's so pretty. I have been media trained. Really? Um, yeah. Back when I was with Nintendo, it was a requirement when you're doing PR. So yeah, I, I sat down with, you know, trained PR professionals and how to answer questions without really answering them. They teach you how to dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they teach you how to play the whole song and dance uh, to give answers that, uh, you know, you're really restating the question back to them, all uh -huh. that fun stuff. So um, I'm actually probably more open than I should be sometimes when I talk and do press. But, uh, yeah, every once in a while I go, mm, OK, I probably shouldn't. No, I'll dance around this issue a little bit because it's, it's uh, mostly in this case it was just I think it would have been boring for your listeners, much like the entire conversation to this point, uh, but even more so. And, it, it, you know, just about corporate structure. <laughs> like, right, right, right. That's not why you got me on here. <laughs> Let's talk about video games, I guess. Um, so last time we spoke, it was a, a big hype up of um, post acquisitions incorporated from uh, it was after East last year. It was no, after West. It was after, it was yeah, after it was after big, West. Crazy stage show production right <laughs> with the unbelievable like castle that, yeah like, the castle bridges oh, nice. and i think i found an article online that like detailed how it was made um, yeah uh yeah I, I think i mentioned last time matt smith who right. is not the doctor but spelled <laughs> like the actor who plays the doctor uh with the one t in his name um yeah he he was uh much better about documenting his process this time and he so he did several different interviews with a couple different outlets um describing the process of of creating it uh which was fascinating to me because honestly i aside from some sketches i don't usually see the final product until a day or two before the show which must be unbelievable to even just see like in person like even uh, I I don't know if I mentioned this last time. It is, but this one caused me a headache because he did not take into account camera sight lines. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was too freaking tall. So, you know, it's I, I, yeah, normally I'm like, wow, this is great. But when it starts impacting our ability to put on a show, then I'm like, God 
damn it, I wish you'd <laughs> looped me in earlier. That's okay. It's like it's like it, that stuff you never think about, but like it has such an enormous impact later on. But well, yeah, when exactly. something big is getting made, I always worry about transport. That too. Of like you're in the workshop or you know wherever you're constructing the thing, it's like you also have to might maybe get this through a door. Yeah, he, and, he, and into he, a he truck. actually has um, uh, the dimensions of all the doors from the loading area to the stage. Wow. Uh, Again, yeah. stuff that I would literally <laughs> never think, oh, you just bring it in. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's not so much for the table stuff, it's for the set pieces. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Um, for example, the doorway, the giant doorway that was right. mine last time, right? He, he had to know how big he can make each piece to get it through. And, and all that stuff, and um, I love the the hall we do it in at West. But the it's a symphony hall; it's not really a stage production hall. So the wings were not meant to bring in big, elaborate set pieces. So right, right. The clearance is not as great as, let's say, when we did it at the Paramount or the stage at South, which has incredible wings. Um, but it's definitely one something. thing that, like, watching because typically. I want to hate flying and also money, but getting out west to uh, to to the west show is on the bucket list. So I always, for now, I'm 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 uh, reduced to sitting at home and watching the streams. And when I see that theater, I kind of um, uh, groan with envy. I guess is if that's the <laughs> weirdest it's way gorgeous. to put it. It's a gorgeous theater. It's, it's such a great venue. Um, What's funny is like some of the other theaters we go to seats as many people, but just the way uh, the main theater at West is constructed just is so immense because it, it, it's it's kind of they're kind of stacked on each other. Yeah. And 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 the triple balcony uh, just and and it's a wraparound balcony. It wraps around all the way up to the stage. Um, just makes it feel uh, more I don't know cathedral immense awesome in the in the old sense of the word full Some, of awe <laughs> Some, someday we will uh we'll make it out there but since since we last spoke there have been uh, a couple paxes i think there's been an australia <laughs> yeah south. South australia south and east is uh, you know i don't know when you're posting this but for me east i fly out a week from today yeah so. east is literally like I um, have a nasty habit of uh, checking the site pretty frequently and annoying all my friends with like, <laughs> hey guys, there's only this many days left. So uh, it is like from the time this is posted, uh, it will literally be a week um, uh, from posting, which has me uh, very excited. I'm sure it's um, both ex- exciting and a bit stressful um, for everyone over on your crew, but I, I, I imagine the lead up is, is pretty incredible. Um, yeah, at this point, it's it's kind of the calm before the storm. Most of the stuff is set up um, like it, it, it's it's traveling. We have some people there, as, you know, the advance team, so to speak. Um, uh, thankfully, my role doesn't require me to really be on site too far ahead of it opening to help set things up. Right. Um, you know, when I land, I'll check in on the merch booth, see how they're going. You know, and the people that are setting those up go in a couple days early to make, you know, start making sure all the products where it needs to be and staged and fixtures and all that fun stuff. Um, you know, some of the people that are helping oversee the expo hall, but that stuff's kind of so automated now. It's, it's, I really don't need to show up until right before the doors open. Which is pretty crazy how to, to think of something like that as automated. Just because it's so enormous well, and like yeah, when... I would, it, automate in the sense of the processes, right? Right, it's not right. Like robots putting <laughs> shit everywhere, but uh, <laughs> it's it's you know I, we've been at every venue at least one year. Most I think South is the newest, right? So this is that was was this year three? I think it was two. Yeah, or just, two yeah, or three. We've yeah. done two. Um, so you know we know who the primary contacts are at each venue. We you know we have relationships with. You know, all the vendors from, you know, internet drops, electricity, outlet, all the, you know, nitty gritty of putting together a show. Um, yeah, all those processes are in place. So it, it's just keep doing what we've been doing and uh, and then deal with the occasional new hiccup that shows up. <laughs> the gremlins. So yeah. um, <laughs> last time, last time we chatted, we talked, we talked uh, 
pretty specifically about Acquisitions Incorporated, so it would be probably insane to not discuss uh, the upcoming show, which um, there has been uh, uh, changing of the guard, I guess, for lack of a better yeah, term. Um, a little bit. We saw uh, the departure of Scott Kurtz um, and his character Binwin um, after the Christmas special, which I'm about halfway through right now because I was watching the top gear grand tour thing because you can only get it on amazon and i was like oh my god a happy accident now i can watch the pin arcade christmas special yeah. um, you've watched more of the christmas special than i have i'm gonna be honest then <laughs> there's a, there's, uh, i was i was very busy with some personal stuff going on during that time so that's one of the i think that's the most detached i've ever been from an acting project no way um hmm. i was doing some stuff behind the scenes but uh I, that one i gotta i gotta hand all the credit to uh uh mike failauer and uh a large part of it also to um, Van Allen, who's who's kind of our de facto cameraman guy. Uh, he helped take on a lot of it as well. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's kind of a cool experiment. I you know I, I think I don't. You haven't watched it yet. You're still working on it. I'm about halfway um, through. Um, it's one of those things that like I love. Like just like just it's one of those background things that like you can just mm-hmm. watch out of the corner of your eye because like. You can just listen to the story being told and like, I dig it. I really, you know, it was very reminiscent of the Acquisition Incorporated, the series that was on YouTube. And I was like, oh, hey, now I have more of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's, you know, we were experimenting a little bit with VOD and trying to figure out the best methodology because uh, we know the demand is there. Uh, it's, it's just figuring out how to get you guys more in a way that doesn't kill us. Right. Uh, and so that was kind of a big experiment. And I think from our end, we see it as a success. There was a few hiccups, like, you know, we hadn't really thought about the country restrictions um, for those who don't have access to Prime. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, things were, were like, oh, yeah, well, crap. Okay, now how do we fix this and make this better so that everyone who wants it can get it and that sort of thing. But I'm hoping to do a few more of those specials here in the next year or two. I so would. anyway, I totally got us off track. You're talking about the Christmas special, and <laughs> yeah, we were talking about um, the uh, the the departure. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Scott oh, has yeah. decided to uh, to take his leave and do his own thing um, with Binwin and Binwin Binwin's minions. That's a <laughs> tongue twister and a half. Um, mm-hmm. And now, uh, from what I understand, um, if I read the program, is is Chris Straub going to be joining in for the yeah. East show? Yeah, yeah. So for the East show, so. Um, Pat really wanted to do East, and we wanted Pat to do it, but he's also doing the Joko cruise, and the the Jonathan Colton cruise uh, gets in, like, into port, like, Friday or Saturday of PAX, and he oh. would have had to take a red eye, and then he would have, like, arrived an hour and a half before he's supposed <laughs> to be on a stage, Jesus. and we're like, all right, we're just not going to risk it, don't you... You be cool, man. You you recover. <laughs> you do you. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and uh, you know, well, it's it's fine. We'll get Morgan back. Um, so this will be her fourth time on stage. Um, and I don't know if you saw the South broadcast, but she was fantastic. She South. was hilarious. It oh, was she was so good. And um, you know, I, I, know I, I think <laughs> you know, she she's really feels a lot more comfortable, and it shows. Um, as she's gotten to know the guys a little better, right? There's just a comfort level at the table that, that maybe was missing in the first couple. Right, right. Um, and then, um, yeah, Chris has kind of been an unspoken member of AI forever. Um, you know, he's been doing the animation, the intro animations for all of our live shows and, uh, you know, for years now. And he always sneaks in his little character. Uh, he's made this <laughs> drow called Kthris. And, uh, you know, he's always sneaking in um, in all these little animations as like a background character and things. <laughs> the and animations, so when, by the way, are are one of my favorite parts, like because there's oh, always like a different theme for there's the one that was out of the park. It was so even even the quick um, I mean, we'll probably get into this in a little bit. The uh, the for honor um, for the watch um oh. promo that he it's like 30 <laughs> seconds long and i made i made my wife watch it like four times because it made <laughs> me laugh so hard <laughs> oh good yeah that that just came out today didn't it or was yeah it yeah yesterday? it was like i think it was uh, earlier today um, yeah we've got so many different projects going on right now it's crazy uh so yeah so chris is gonna take a, a little uh 
a more active role, at least at East. Um, also, uh, so you're posting this on Friday, yes? What day is today? Today's Thursday? Thursday. Today's Thursday. Um, are you posting this? It'll either be Friday or Saturday. Okay. Depending so, on what you're about to say. <laughs> so, no, no, no. So on Monday, um, we've got some cool announcements that are tangentially involving AI. So everyone everyone listening can wait till... The, you just got to wait like a day or two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then yeah. keep your ear so to the I can't ground. Talk about it. I can't talk about it now, but I guess I've... God damn it, I've left the door open for you to invite me back a third time. I, <laughs> oh, well, Dan, you know, God well... Damn it. <laughs> shit, man. I thought I was better trained than this. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, well, we can talk about that more later. But, yeah, so you, he's going to join us now. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I'm, I got a little bit of a hint of what the Dungeon Master has in store. Um, I usually am pretty far removed, but I was asking about... Uh, we're not doing a full pro- production or anything, but there's going to be some um, some LCD screens. Some stuff. Uh, at, and so I'm like, well, you know, at the very least, maybe we can put some backdrop stuff that's related to the, the setting. Right, right. Okay. So, so That's like a nice uh, little a nice little uh, a, l- a little morsel, for lack of a... I'm really <laughs> bad with my vocab tonight. Because normally, um, West gets like the... The, yeah, the uh, full stage. The full treatment, stage right? is beautiful. We always say that East has has been the unplugged version, um, which it works. It's not even like it, it's like a detriment. It's just like it's no. like it's like a down like a gritty D and D game. It's it's yeah. Uh, it's just a D and D game. Yeah, and you just enjoy the people doing it. <laughs> yep. Um, South, we took that same approach. Uh, we had these two LCD screens, and we did some character art just to kind of liven it up a little bit visually. Um, so something similar to what we did itself for East as well in terms of a stage visual. Which I was, um, I will admit when I, because I didn't even know that uh, AI was getting launched at South because typically it's only been a West and an East thing. And yeah. I, I've been a little um, pompous about it because <laughs> mm. I'm like, oh yeah, what, whatever South in Australia, you know, we get acting. So, and I was like, oh, South has it now. I, I mean, I'm going to watch the shit out of it, but like, yeah. okay. Yeah, I guess well, they I guess they earned it. <laughs> I don't know if we've said this publicly, and and there's always you know there can always be a fly in the ointment, but the goal is AI at every PAX, um, which is which is fair. It's it that's been the goal. <laughs> I, I I feel the most bad for Australia right now, um, because they are they are they were actually ahead of the line of South right in terms of PAXs how long they've gone without one right right. Um, but they're also the most complicated, um, hmm. it, not just from budgeting standpoints and who's paying for what, but also uh, uh, some people don't like to fly all that far distance, and you right. know, with uh, two extra guests above and beyond Mike and Jerry, it's um, gets a little more complicated. Um, uh, you know, I I haven't been, even I haven't been out to Oz since the first year. Oh no way! Um, I was supposed, to, yeah, I haven't. I we were supposed to go every other year, and since there wasn't an AI there, I, I kind of I was like, okay, you know, Penny Arcade, you don't need to spend all that money to send me out there. Um, and then this last year, I was supposed to go, uh, but then I had a family thing come up. Right. No, nothing tragic uh, or anything like that, uh, but you know, I just something I needed to be at home for. Um, so I I bowed out of this year as well. Um, but you know, if if things still keep on track the way we're going and we're really planning to hope it's there as well um if ai is there i'm 99 percent sure i'll be there as well <laughs> um there's always the the out right so i i am uh, see i'm, I'm going to talk about things you got your listeners don't care about we did bring <laughs> on a new uh project manager who uh because i was dying i'm going to be honest i was getting buried under lots of job responsibilities. And so we brought on a project manager and uh, you may have seen her on the stream. Her name is Alyssa Grant. Mm-hmm. Um, and she actually used to work at Wizards of the Coast uh, before she joined us with the D&D team. So her incredible knowledge makes it very easy to help her, have her help me out with AI. Um, so she, you know, I, I do envision a time where maybe at one or two PAXs or, you know, a year from now she's, She's the new stage manager for all things AI. Uh, right, I can right. see that happening very, um, 
without any issues. So, uh, but yeah, you know, it'll either be me or her helping wherever there's an AI, there's going to be one of us pulling the strings. Does the, the DM ever have requests or like plans for what the game is that involve like, um, the map design or uh, uh, props or anything, or is that like, is that all a mystery uh, until he gets to the stage too? Perkins brings all his own shit. <laughs> he, um, I, I will, I will talk to him. So not so much for any of the other shows, but for West, um, occasionally he'll have a request for like a lighting, like not a lighting cue, but like a theme, like, it's underground, so we need this. Do you have any, like, water dripping in a cave sound effect to play an ambient noise? Things like that. Hmm. Um, uh, so that's the only time I need to worry about it. But other than that, he brings all his own costume. <laughs> I don't know what he's dressing as usually until he shows up. <laughs> uh, yeah, his own props. Um, when we did East last year where Mike and... Uh, Patrick ran uh, ran the adventures. Um, it was really I was cool. much more. Have you seen, I was, was much really more cool. involved. Yeah, that I Mike like. I'm the one who went online to find a giant purple gem as a prop, <laughs> and I printed all his artwork to make sure it was ready to go out. And, you know, I was I was much more involved in that aspect of the things. But uh, yeah, with with, with Chris, um, he's usually got a couple folks on the wizard side that helps him out. Trevor Kid who does a lot of their social media and stuff. He's kind of like my counterpart on the wizard side of things hmm. to help facilitate things on their end. I will say, um, you know, uh, as far as like the cast goes, super, pu- I'm, I'm going to miss uh, Patrick Rothfuss there because he was so good at West with, um, with his dad voice. <laughs> people mm. were, people were getting a little rowdy. Was it oh, no uh, uh, South? Excuse it was, me, South, it was South, South, South. The dad voice. Um, and then when he went off on the disguises, oh my god, it was <laughs> this thirty-minute bit on disguises. It was so good. It was so good. Um, yeah, he's he's he just, uh, you know, I don't, I, I think uh, I think Jerry promoted finally Viari. He's not an intern anymore. He's a sub employee. <laughs> so, uh, you know, yeah. It's it's you know it's kind of a double edged sword Scott leaving, but at the same time I'm really kind of excited about who else we can get at the table. Right, right. Um, because Patrick had kind of locked himself in, so it was our original idea was to rotate the interns. Right. God damn, Patrick! <laughs> you, you you painted us into a corner, and he, we can't get rid of you. He just he, so he wheels his way good. in. <laughs> he yeah, is. He's so, brilliant. He's so good so, at like he's good at the role playing aspect and like with the, that like. Even when he loses his arm, he keeps his cool. Like when yeah. you use an apocalypse dagger, you're gonna lose your arm. You know, He's so, huh. such a smooth talker, the Perkins. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so so, but this this will free up a seat that we can hopefully rotate in some some new talent and uh, and and things like that. And we're looking at other ways to uh, say how do I how do I properly <laughs> phrase this without giving too much Don't get yourself We're in trouble. We're looking at ways to expand the AI universe uh, across multi-media presentations or something like that. I right? love the sentence that you just said. I don't even know what it means, but it has <laughs> exactly. me excited. Uh, transmedia. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Spreading AI in a transmedia world. You know, I I want to ask questions, but I Go don't... <laughs> huh? Doesn't mean I'll answer him. You can ask him. <laughs> He's, he's just putting his dancing shoes on. He's... <laughs> um, I've played it. Have, you haven't played it. Uh, what was the game I could get off PlayStation Network? Risk? No, 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 no. <laughs> the, the Penny Arcade. Uh, on the Rain Slick Precipice of Dark Darkness. darkness. Blech, God, Epi- that's a tough episodes one. one through four. I've done episode one. I got partway into episode two. And I'm just kinda... started three. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping. I don't care about the first two. I didn't work on those. <laughs> I worked on three. I worked on three and four. You start with those ones. <laughs> um, I kind of want to like inquire. Does that mean there's going to be uh, acting like <laughs> gameplay? An acting game? Okay, I can say that there are no current plans 
for uh, an Act Inc. video game of any kind. Um, although we've licensed it to folks that have, like, uh, Card Hunters. Um, right. Did, like, an AI booster thing that Jerry wrote all the text for and stuff. Hmm. Um, and uh, was it was it Neverwinter did, uh, did, like, a thing with the set, the... the uh, the year that Perkins dressed as a mushroom, the giant weird mushroom guy, <laughs> um, they like did a huge set where like the set from the tabletop is in the game and you play like within the set that we used on our table. It's pretty crazy. Was that hmm. the year he had that really tall hat on? Was that yeah. West two years ago, I he think? Made, he kept making really bad jokes about how he was a fun guy. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it was Neverwinter. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, they had like that really nice elaborate set with like I think Drizzt showed up at some point in yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. And the 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 former worm that was now an inn uh, <laughs> was in the Underdark. That's the term. It's the the one that took place in the Underdark. Right. Right. Yep. Uh, where he had the Statler and Waldorf gargoyle yes. characters. <laughs> so yeah, that got gamified. But yeah, so currently there's 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 nothing although. Yeah, you know, if 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 there's an indie dev that was interested in putting something together, you know, they could reach out. If they, they hear this episode, out, I wouldn't talking. you know, it's I. It could all it could all begin right here. This is the genesis, right. possibly. You never know. Oh, and we can. Could, there's a, we'll share credit like for this a, idea. There's like a biz ops email on the website or something. <laughs> <laughs> you can write in. I hey. get those emails. Sometimes I read them. Sometimes. I mean, <laughs> sometimes. I can verify that Jeff sometimes reads his email. I don't know if the ops things. one, but he, he he at least reads reads his. Yeah, but. just well, you know, the ones that are like on the website is these are contact emails. Right, right. They get so much spam; it's hard to find the legit stuff for the real stuff. Right. <laughs> like like a bunch of amateur podcasters, not like pros, like like us. You know, you know how it goes. Uh, see, you reached out direct through Twitter, <laughs> and you caught me in my post West euphoria of success. It's true. I was not expecting that down. response, and I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> that was wishful thinking, but now I'm capitalizing on. Um, That's right. But Penny um, Arcade doesn't let me talk to the press much anymore, so I sneak it in. Unbelievable! Oh. I talk to you guys. No, I'm just nice. kidding. I mean, with with the with the title now, I mean, even. I mean, like you said, you, you are busy as shit. So, like the fact that yeah, yeah, when Robert left, it kind of caused us to, to to. We needed to hunker down and figure out ways to to make the company run without this huge wealth of talent that we suddenly lost. And so I fooled everyone and uh, <laughs> got, got them to give me a director of ops title. Um, now, basically what it is, is we recognize that the company needed uh, a lot of elements of the company basically needed to be treated like a big project. Right, right. Uh, and that's kind of what it is. Director of ops is kind of like, how do all these pieces go together and when are they due? And how do we get to this end goal? Um, uh, now, with that being said, it was killing me, and, and we've we've hired up, we've actually hired quite a few people since uh, since I last talked to you guys. Alyssa is one of them. Uh, we, you know, I recognized very quickly we needed an, an in-house accountant, so uh, we've we've hired uh, another guy by the name of Grant, who you'll see on the stream every once in a while. Um, uh, let's see, we hired a new engineer. Uh, and uh, even the warehouse, uh, which is falls under my domain as well, uh, we're hiring a few folks to help with the warehouse. That um, as, as merch efforts are ramping up. Jeff, that post killed me. <laughs> that post drove me nuts oh, for about original, a week. Oh, because you wanted to apply? Well, because I <laughs> is this my resume what? right here? <laughs> is this where I, is this where I talk about how I was a, I was a receiving manager for three years and how I've worked in two different warehouses and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> You're overqualified for what we're looking for. <laughs> we, we, we need people to put things in boxes and slap shipping labels on them. It's very entry level. Was, it would have been way. That was my first job, shipping vitamins. Yeah. No, that's that's what we're looking for is we're looking for, you know. Uh, and it's the first time that Penny Arcade's really had that kind of opportunity, right, right for right. non-specialized. Uh, you know, you don't have to have a college degree in a specific field. Um so we got a good we got a good list of applicants and my warehouse managers narrowing them down here. And it's hopefully we'll find some good folks. 
do you ever like and this is just as a fan from the outside like two guys who started making a web comic <laughs> and now you're talking oh god we need an accountant <laughs> we need an engineer we okay director of operations i need we need a i need okay so we need to hire yeah. this that it's it started with so i needed you this sweater you know like yeah. it's <laughs> yeah yeah the empire built on dick jokes and... <laughs> I mean, can, um, is is that's the dream, I guess, you know? I, yeah, you know, I, I, I think so often we're, we're so close to it and we're so busy working on whatever's next. Um, we don't get a chance to step back and see it. I, I have had occasion, um, uh, you know, we've had some corporate retreats where we're all traveling to someplace wonderful and kind of recharging our batteries. And I remember what, we were getting on the shuttle to go to the rental cars and I, I, I turned to Mike uh, who looked, was like, this is pretty cool, isn't it? And he's like, yeah, this is, you know, reflecting on where they are, were and where, how far they've come. You know, it does hit them every once in a while. But right, right. most of the time you're so busy just working on all the cool stuff. Um, you know, they don't, it doesn't hit you until afterwards. Which I can't even imagine, like, because, like, the PAX season you know, where, like, it's up to four shows a day. So even if you spread it out, like, evenly throughout the year, you're looking yeah. at one every three months, which already yeah. seems insane. That was, the, that was the original kind of plan, but due to venues and timing, it's like, boy, once West hits, it's just boom, 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 boom. Hmm. And, and now it, the the gap now is between East and West. Most company, like, most people, especially because, like, we are – veterans of like the con circuit you know like in our local area you know mm -hmm. they do that one show per year and that one show is everything they have the entire year goes to planning for this one show bang we did the show oh we did it <laughs> until next year mm -hmm. whereas like south was like a month ago three weeks ago a month ago like i can't yeah i if i remember correctly there were there are exactly was it 30 Five days between South and East. <laughs> like planning Something for like the... That. It was like just a little over a month. There obviously ridiculous. has to be like, you know, simultaneous planning. Oh, yeah. So like, oh, yeah. There's um, there's a few people. I am not one of them. I have purposely stayed away from PAX Ops specifically. So when it says Director of Ops, I'm very clear. That is about the company <laughs> of Penny Arcade and not PAX um, because that would definitely kill me. Uh, no, there are a few individuals that are extremely overworked um, and underappreciated. Um, so if you see Mr. David Kaufman specifically and Kristen Lindsay um, at PAX, let them know how much you appreciate those two individuals because uh, they are uh, they are the, the, the engines that are running PAX, to be completely honest. Um, you know, there's other people involved and stuff, and Reed's got a lot of folks, our partner company, who we wouldn't be able to do this at all without their logistics. But, um, yeah, like, you know, Chris, Kristen is the mother, basically, of all the enforcers. She does a lot of other stuff, too, but that's her her primary role is, is organizing and making sure anything that they have to deal with gets to her. And then um, uh, David Kaufman, man, he is... He's doing everything from making sure, you know, uh, the program's getting done, the, the guides are getting done, the uh, console free play has enough working consoles, uh, you know, permit. I, he's, uh, it, you know, he is PAX incarnate, right, to right. be honest. Uh, so he deserves a lot of love and respect from uh, from the attendees. Um yeah, they're 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 stretched thin. I'm not gonna lie, uh, but you know, there are things Reed does. Um, Alyssa's actually helping out with some minor stuff within the PAX things. Um, uh, I know Reed's hired a couple folks as well to, to to help offload some of this, and and a lot of it comes back to the automation I, I mentioned earlier. Better word for it be processes. Uh, there's processes in place that stop you. From having to think, how do we do this? We already know how to do it. Now right, it's right. just inserting the new assets for that particular show. So, having done so many of these shows, and like, 
you know, doing so many, you know, for a year. Are you still like when a PAX is happening, like, you know, for example, the the switch literally comes out in, you know, at least in our time, like two and a half hours, something like that. Um, do you still find yourself getting excited for the stuff that you are going to see for like, do you have time to, to actually like walk the floor and, you Oh know? no, I, I stay the heck out of expo. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it's a, if I am at expo, that means I am, uh, a mistake was made. <laughs> I have made a huge mistake. Uh, yeah. Cause it's just, I, you know, I'll try to sneak in during setup and, um, say hi to, you know, folks and, and, how you doing? Uh, that sort of thing. I, I, you know, I, I am a little jaded. Uh, I've been in the industry over 20 years now. And so I am perfectly content to wait until a game is available at retail. And, uh, you know, even a couple days after it hits retail, uh, to hear what people are saying and then buy it. Uh, I, I, I've spent enough of my, gaming years playing betas and <laughs> demos and broken software <laughs> uh that i i perfectly content to just wait and see what catches fire with the public and then that's by you know i've got exceptions like i pre-ordered mass effect andromeda right like there's there's certain franchises that i'm like i don't even need to see now you know it, it got it hooks it hooks into me at some point um every once in a while someone will be like oh you got to go check this out um, on the show floor and I'll go, you know, I'll try to make a point to go check it out. Are there certain, uh, points of advice that you take more seriously than others? Or like someone's recommendation? Like, I know I can trust my friend so-and-so or like, um, <laughs> well, I mean, Jerry, Jerry's really good at, uh, he knows what turns everyone's cranks within the office. It's like his natural talent. He knows uh, you know, if it has X, Y, and Z, go to this person. If it has A, B, and C, go to this person. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to jump up and down for a mech-based real-time strategy, but Kiko might. Um, you know, a really good third-person action adventure, uh, on the other hand, uh, with a lot of RPG elements. That'll suck me in. Supposedly the new, uh, like, Breath of the Wild, the new Zelda game. Like, yeah. IG, IGN's review just came out. They gave it a 10, hmm. called it a masterpiece. I like, know. Everyone's I, been, like... I'm debating, right? I mean, I'll, I'll buy it. <laughs> like, I'm planning to go out and get the Switch tonight. and uh, You know, I'll pick it up. Um, having it be portable means I could theoretically play it on the plane to East. <laughs> right? <laughs> How, lo- um, how long is that flight? This is this is a uh, logistics episode. I hope everyone is strapped in for their yeah, logistics. Right. <laughs> so the Teamsters start loading. This. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's about five and a half hours from Seattle there, and it's even longer coming back because you're going against the wind. So it's like six and a half hours coming back. You could bang out a dungeon in that time. You could, you know, <laughs> I could figure it out. You know, except the battery life's only three hours or so on the thing. Hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, I. I I have not played a full Zelda game since Wind Waker. Um, I mean, that's I a good to one, play you know. Twilight, to... and I, I ju- it just didn't, it didn't get its claws into me. Right, right. Um, so you know, this one I might try. The problem is, I've got so many friends at Nintendo who are constantly telling me how great it is. Mm-hmm. That part of me is like, eh, I don't want to play it now, right? Because <laughs> everyone's telling you you should play it. I don't want to play it. You know, it's one of those things. I've got, I've got some built-up animosity. Uh, I'm just kidding. I, I, no, I totally get it because well, I have but you friends. You understand that... what I say? It's like everyone's read this book. The last oh thing God. you want to do is freaking read this book. And, All right, God damn it, you were right. It's you're, great, but... you're talking to a mirror. <laughs> 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 this is exactly uh, how I feel with certain things. Yep. It's like yeah. oh, it's, it's the greatest thing ever. I'm never going to look at it. Not even <laughs> once. Yep. I want to find my own greatest thing. Exactly. Yep. I want to lead blaze the trail i think i get uh, visibly angry with anyone who isn't playing overwatch right now because <laughs> how are you not 
playing Overwatch. Because it's it's not competitive season. Because games with real people sucks. <laughs> <laughs> True. I, I, I will admit, I bought Overwatch. Like, I played the beta. I was like, hey, that was a lot of fun. Didn't know that there was no campaign. <laughs> so, like, I bought the game. Plug it in. Oh, it's just multi... It's it's exclusively mo okay. I guess I can play that now. Like you know, 120 hours later, <laughs> and that's why I played the original Titanfall all of five hours. Right. Same thing. Right. It's like, I don't. You know. I I, I. I don't know. Maybe I'm just old and cantankerous now. I just. <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to play mode. against real people. I can get mad at an AI. I don't like being mad at real people. That's me in Hearthstone. I. Oh, yeah. I yeah. I had to quit Hearthstone. Yep. Yep, I can only play Hearthstone against the computer, and even then, the computer typically, every now and then, I'll just get whipped, and I'm like, how is this <laughs> happening? I am a human being. I created computers, or at least my brethren did. But um, anyways. What you said before of, like, it's a, what was the term you used? I don't know. Strate uh, logistics episode. Right, right. Young Alex hated simulators. I didn't play mm. Sims anything. But like old Alex that now like has to organize so much of his life <laughs> and have everything be in order because no one takes care of me. Um, I'm imagining like constructing a layout of a convention as if it's a sim. And I'm like, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, I can apply real world skills to my video games. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, like I, you know, I used to play a lot of action stuff and now I'm just like, oh, give me a turn based or, you know. You know, I'm playing Final Fantasy 15 with the pause, right? With the, the whatever the the bar is that lets the combat stop, so you figure out what you want to do next. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, you know, it's give me a good old turn-based RPG any day now. It's it's I, I I no longer have the skills for the the quick hack and slashes. Speaking of hack and slash, I guess we can talk about because there's um. Did it start at East last year the for the watch? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it was East last year, right? With, with Overwatch, right? Overwatch. And then they did, what was the other game they did? Gears of War. Gears of War, that's right. Which was like, because um, like when yeah. they, go, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 I, I was going to say, yeah, I think, we, you know, that's another thing. I think we'd like to do it at every PAX, but. It's a combination of finding the right sponsor and the right game um, to pull it off. And then um, getting everyone together because there's the teams. <laughs> yeah, and then getting... I, you know, finding, yeah, there's a lot of logistics involved. Um, That's what this uh, episode's about today, baby. We're just talking <laughs> logistics. You know? A lot of talking logistics. Uh, so we coordinate each talent's uh, personal assistant. No. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's, uh, but yeah, this one came together... You know, a little while ago, and uh, um, we were actually trying to do it for South. I'm going to be honest, but we couldn't quite pull it off in time. So, so it's at East, but I think it works well because it allowed For Honor to come out and uh, and get a lot of good buzz. Um, so, uh, yeah, the guys have been practicing, and uh, it's, it's almost... kind of a cool little thing. They 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 talk it up, but they take it pretty seriously. They uh, they, they make so... jokes, but. There's a lot of ego involved. <laughs> right, like it's it's to the point. Like you know, there's the stories of like how how Mike and Jerry don't play video games against one another. Mm -hmm. This is the only time they do it because it gets it gets heated, and I get it. Yeah, I get it. I'm talking about my friend Colin with Smash Brothers. <laughs> I get it, totally 100. percent But like when you see like because they did the video, um, uh, they did the um, Welcome to Pax. Was it was it a Welcome to Pax video? I think it was, where they talked about for the watch. Um, yeah, and like the just the the trash talk, and I'm like, guys, just stop, get along, <laughs> you know. Like it's <laughs> it's like almost to the point where it's like, oh my god, are they are they fighting? You know, are they gonna are they fighting right now? Cathartic for them. I think it's very <laughs> cathartic. It's like they get a say. It's like this is a safe space. You can finally <laughs> say whatever you've been holding inside, <laughs> and then they just go off. Um, I, although for for Jerry, right, Jerry, it's kind of a challenge. He's like, how creative can I get with my euphemisms and insults about vanquishing mike um which mike is is he's undefeated right now he's he's still yeah around. yeah he's, he's uh yeah yeah I, I i haven't watched any of their for honor skills i although i streamed <laughs> with dave today um and dave was practicing and so i think dave's on jerry's team and if 
the stream has anything to say or the, those results say anything. <laughs> I think Mike's in, Mike's in good shape. I was I was giving Dave a lot of crap. It took him a long time to win. Um, although the mode that they're playing, I guess, is not the you know it's it's this Dominion mode, so it's not it's not as one on one, which is where he was really losing. Right, right. Is have the um, and again, you might need your dancing your dancing feet. Have the teams been released? Is that something that? Has- uh, I know that Jerry talked about his. Um. So I know it's Dave and uh, Alyssa, speaking of which, mm-hmm. uh, she's going to be on his team. And then he's he's also got some sort of ringer. I was just going <laughs> to say, is there like the, the, you know, the pocket ace, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's got some <laughs> Twitch stream acer. I, I don't think Mike's announced his team. That's probably going to happen next week. I'm sure he'll do a post. Because I know there's more, I know there's a longer teaser uh, besides the one we released today. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's got to go up eventually. Keep your eyes peeled, hmm. and go watch the original one because it's it's a beautiful thirty seconds of your life, and it makes me laugh because <laughs> has that dry like. I made Alex watch it before we started. <laughs> so he he gets it, but yeah, they're gonna be I, playing um, for honor for the watch, which um, features a beautiful watch, and then uh, bragging rights for a couple months until the next yeah. until the next for the watch competition. Until the next competition, which I believe the um. The carrying case for the watch is made by uh, Wormwood Gaming, I believe. Um, uh, I, I know recall. the case was. I think the actual watch is a like a a really nice, you know, Android. Right, it's like a smartwatch. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a smartwatch so that they could put the program, the watch face, to look like it's supposed to in the comic. Right, right. So, have you seen Wormwood's Kickstarter for their the their DM, DM screen? screen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mean the one where you can get the ai logo yeah embossed on it <laughs> into on the, different parts of it yeah, yeah i saw the, the one for the dice tray and i was like yeah. and i need that <laughs> yeah 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 we, yeah i'm pretty we're, familiar with that one we're big fans of wormwood <laughs> gaming wormwood uh i fell in love yeah, with them I at like, pax like i like wormwood and then the other one i we i really like is um elderwood mm-hmm. um they do uh, uh if you've seen the uh the ai uh employee manuals that are up on the yep, yep. stage yeah those are you know <laughs> dice boxes with ai dice the, they're, they they're made those. to look like like tomes almost <laughs> yeah and like you open them up and like oh, it holds yeah, your yeah. dice and it holds your shit you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yep. they have them up on the stage there um that's cool it's it's rad but yeah they're doing the um uh for the watch again um la- i remember at east last year because they had the big stage set up with all this you know the setup and they were playing overwatch and i remember i think um uh, Joe and Colin were in line for pins. No, it couldn't have been because Mike and Jerry were playing Overwatch. It couldn't have been the pin trading thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I can't remember. I, I remember being alone. I was just wandering around and it was whatever. And I was like, hey, people are playing Overwatch. And I just kind of like glanced at it and then like did another lap and I came back around. And I was like, wait, I feel like this is like an event happening right now. It's not just yeah. people playing Overwatch. And uh, then I realized no, like what was actually thing. going on and like <laughs> why everyone was yelling so loud. <laughs> Craziness. Um, but it so, was so. So I didn't realize you guys are pin pin people. Do you, you you pin traders? Yeah. yeah. We you uh you hooked us last last east. Initially, ah. I had, for the most part I had avoided it. You know, like um. God, I had a. Uh, I had the Ellie pin. That's what it was. Yeah. The Ellie wow. pin from East way, like three years ago. And like, that was kind of my only one for a while. Cause I love last of us. I was like, oh my God, Ellie pin. So cool. And then I lost it on my honeymoon. So happy. So happy. I lost that rare pin. Really okay. happy about that. The, 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 that sentence is loaded with <laughs> the need to ask some questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you lost a pin during your honeymoon. Well, it was, I, I guess, well, technically it was before I was that married. That is the weirdest threesome I have ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not judging, just observing. Because my wife and I had the uh, most backwards marriage in the history of marriage. Um, so we went away before we got married. And then, anyways, uh, and I think I know exactly the moment it happened, too. I was picking my bag up off a chair. And, like, I felt a little tug. And I think the pin, like, had got caught, like, on, like, a... A slat on the chair. There's a lot more painful ways that you could have lost that <laughs> pin during a honeymoon. I felt a tug during the honeymoon, and I lost my pin. Is, is that's the best way I can put it? So much euphemism. So many euphemism. Uh, 
Anyways. So, yeah. So I, I'm very excited for this year's staff set. Of they the were just released like yesterday. Food ones, yeah. Um, I think they're the most adorable staff set we've done. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to start trading mine at East. All the staff members look like food. I, for, I looked yeah. it up. Did you look it up? Because <laughs> <laughs> last year it was like the... Um, and I've had, to, I've had to answer questions on it because people go, why do you have a pin with a horse head on it? And mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, <laughs> sit down and let me explain this to you. <laughs> let me explain the story. Yeah, these, these, these pins are going to appeal to folks who have no idea what the whole pin is about. So um, my son has already told me I have to bring enough of my pin back so he can give one to everyone in his class. I mean, that's so. fair. He he, he he's really loves. He's he's got a he's got a thing going, a theme going. He's even got clothes with like. Is that the pizza that faces? Hmm? Was that the pizza shirt? Was that? I remember seeing a pizza shirt on Twitter. Uh, he, so he has a shirt that's a print is all fries. Fries. All that's <laughs> what it was. Yes. He's got another one that's all candy. <laughs> and t- yesterday was picture day, and he made us put that shirt. He had to wear that shirt. He wanted to wear that shirt for his school pictures. I love it. So, <laughs> I love that so much. But, I, but I, you know, it, it, it makes him unique, and he kind of revels in it. And I'm, I'm a big fan of that, so I'll encourage it. But uh, um, pins, yes, we got hooked. Pins. Al- uh, yeah. Alex has been collecting pins for a while. Mm-hmm. I Last year, since I got, a cu- like, so many pins, my wife helped me make, uh, like, a custom, like, pin box that I can stick, you know, cork board and all that stuff. It like, I don't even have, I have maybe 10, maybe like including our own, which you can, uh, $5. You can have a, uh, pins with very pin. Just email Alex at OMB Not official Penny Arcade pins. It's, yes, it's, it's not an official Penny, Penny Arcade pin. Um, it is, uh, it's one that we, yeah, anyway, <clears throat> pins. So, good cause. <laughs> so, um, I, I had to reorganize mine on my pin bag into ones I'll keep forever, and then as one one side, and the other side is ones that are for trades. It's true. All right, so uh, you know, I've talked to you guys twice now. Yeah, yeah. If you guys talk to me in person at a PAX, and I don't know the face with the voice. Like, have we exchanged? No, like, have no, you no, no. I've I've stuff? always been too terrified to approach anyone. Um, I okay. know. Because, uh, like, last year when people were waiting in the pin line for, like, the big pin event, I sent a, um, a proxy in my, in my <laughs> stay. I was like, hey, man, here's, here's my pin. If you could trade for this. Well, because, like, I had, the, I had the media badge, and I was like, I feel bad not doing media things. Mm-hmm. Like, no. sh- do I have the right to be in this line right now? Don't feel bad. That's well, my favorite thing to do. One of my favorite things to do at PAX is, is the pin trading not just at the event but you know when i can sneak out to the merch booth and do it for an hour or two at a time in between panels or whatever hmm. and uh yeah inter- i'd much rather have you come up and engage me in small talk pleasant conversation um you're inviting yourself for for more of us jeff i hope <laughs> you really you know. that's fine that's what i'm <laughs> If I didn't want people to come see me, I wouldn't tweet that I'm available to trade pins at that location. <laughs> true, you know, true. I'm not. It's, it's I'm broadcasting it, so it's it's like I've got places to hide in that convention center. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> if I need to go squirrel away for a while, I can do that. That's, I have a special badge. It lets me get to places no one else can get. It's to. a big place. I don't so even, we, yeah, I have lots of little hidey holes that I can go hide in and uh, and just uh, bathe and in just, pins. You know, yeah, just take a breather so <laughs> but yeah you, I, unless i'm like walking quickly from one place to another with a determined look on my face at any other time i'm i'm available to approach and, it, and if i'm wearing my lanyard with my pins i'm definitely available to approach get those pins because that means I'm, I'm trading you can only get the staff pins from for okay for the uninitiated uh such as myself <laughs> like a year ago because we tried we tried to trade our pin for penny arcade pins oh you got Didn't, shot down oh yeah real hard <laughs> only official penny arcade pins for other official penny arcade like, pins. It's, it's a win-win situation because <laughs> our pins getting out there and then you know get the pin you want it, no it doesn't work that way so if you have penny if you have penny arcade pins well which you can pick up like at the merch booth or whatever you can trade with people um you can then trade with uh like the staff like there's the big main event like in the main uh queue hall 
um, at least this is where it was last year, um, where you can like wait in the line. You can see all the all the staff members of Penny Arcade. Penny, yeah, Penny, Penny Arcade. You know, and they have their their staff pins, and you can trade their pins with them. It's pretty much the only time you can get those, unless you buy them secondhand off eBay for ridiculous money. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're like custom I hope pins. I always tell everyone I'm the purest source of my pin too. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I know um, I know Gavin does a lot of like customizing. Um, yeah, Gavin will write on them with these markers. And, uh, <laughs> my son is very happy that the yet he, uh, he has two pins in my face. And they're both vomiting. <laughs> um, those, he's very proud of his vomiting dad pins. I would be. <laughs> that sounds great. So, but they, yeah, uh, yeah, it's um, but yeah, you can you know only get them from other staff uh, staff members, and it doesn't have to just be at the event. Um, you know, all of us try to take turns at uh, sitting at a table over by the merch light booth up in the lobby, and uh, we'll tweet out when we're there. Or if you see us walking around and we have our lanyard with our pins on it. Uh, that is an open invitation to come up and say, "Hey, can I trade a pin?" Hmm. Uh, it won't bother us at all. It's um, hyper addicting, and uh, I and wish the I... community around it is a blast. Right? It's, it's like, true. There's even an episode of a uh, uh, Welcome to Pax that you can watch on the whole thing. It's beautiful. There you go. And when you see like, there's I remember seeing this one dude last year. He had he has one of the Pin Arcade scarves. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, he had the like one of the PAX specific ones, I think, it was the red one, literally covered in completely covered in pins. Like, yeah. completely. When he walked, it was like, uh, I can't even equate it to something. It was uh, there's, there's a lot of weight. There's a guy um, by the name of Mike Gills, uh, who uh, he comes to West. I don't I don't know if he makes it out to the other ones. Um, he has like the Girl Scout sashes, <laughs> like you know that he almost like bandoliers right right he's got two of them and they cross over his chest and they're just covered in pins um i don't know if he still does that but he was you know he invested heavily in very good locking backs <laughs> <laughs> which none of the pins popped off that's like the most again getting into logistics here because that's what this episode's <laughs> about the the backing on a pin because yeah the ones yeah, you can't I, just you can't just trade a pin you got to plan ahead you it's true. Process. You guys get a locking. You guys really, uh, you didn't skimp on the backers. I gotta say that, like those, that shits. It's just the rubber. It, it locks it right down. Real, real good logistic talk right here. Because like I've lost many a pin from shit backing. Mm-hmm. I'm getting heated right now over <laughs> pin backs. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> when you think you think your 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 item is secure. Anyways, okay, so packs. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, it's nice to know what makes you passionate. <laughs> it's true. Pinbacks uh, really, really get me. Um, I mean, I, I don't think I get could could get hyped up more for for the show. So you have to excuse my gushing, but mm-hmm. it's just, um, no it's it's, it's a beautiful show, and and I gotta congratulate. You know, a, a pre congratulate, also a post congratulate for South because you just had South, and then West was back in January. Is that when West was? Uh, West West September September I'm an uh, idiot er, early November uh, was Australia uh, yeah and then we did South now it's East and then we have a little bit of a break I guess yeah, we you know a, other projects going on so it's not really a break right right <laughs> but it is a it's a PAX break has the the PAX XP thing been at other PAXs already or is it new for East no, it's it's been at other PAXs. Okay. It's been um, I'm not very familiar with it, um, except I get, you know, everyone I'll I'll get asked to do stuff for it every once in a while or provide something for it. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's been that's been around quite a while, at least at West, um, and I'm I know it was at South because there was one on the way to the main lobby that everyone was gathered at and always had a big line. So I remember that, but yeah, it should be really good just for, to put it as bluntly as possible. Plus we, oh God, there's so much we didn't even get to just got so hung up on logistics. What are we supposed to talk to? Let's do a lightning round. I don't even know. Uh, 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 what else is there? Um, the, there's going to be good panels. Am I right? I mean, yes. can we discuss, panels uh, come to see picture game? I'm also for the first time ever going to be on the Jackbox. Uh, we do a fun little, you know, play some of the Jackbox games with 
minor internet celebrities and somehow I talked myself onto being on the panel. Um, <laughs> so it'll be me and Chris and uh, Nika Harper, who we actually do the picture game idea panel usually. Jerry's going to be there and then Mikey Newman. You know, movies with Mikey. Mm-hmm. Going um, to that panel. That was like the next uh, thing I was going to say, man. So excited. Uh, yeah, we're, I, I'm not even sure which Jackbox games we'll play. It's usually like Drawful and something else. But uh, play that. Hopefully entertain everyone. Uh, you know, if you if you want to get into the industry, uh, there's a panel for that. If you want to learn about a specific aspect of the industry, art, story, whatever, there's going to be panels for that. If you want to learn about social causes in gaming, uh, there's all sorts of panels for that. Charities, um, you know, post morts on, you know, some of your favorite franchises. Uh, those are all there. If you just want to sit and play D and D, we can do that too. In the tabletop area, uh, play play a new board game. Uh, let's see concerts. What else we got? What there's, else? Um, hit, hit me. I'm ready. What else? Uh, uh, we talked about panels. Um, what a, uh, I had it right on the tip of my tongue. It was right there. The Omegathon. Go see the Omegathon. Oh, the Omegathon. Yeah, I don't know. I, I stopped. We do so many of these. I used to ask all the time what our big finale was, so I'd know ahead of time. Now I just don't care. I mean, I do care, <laughs> but I don't. Like, there's so many of them. I'm You're like, so jaded. Right. I am. I'm so jaded. I'm <laughs> old and dangerous and jaded. And I get off my multiplayer game lawn. And, um. <laughs> Yeah, so I, you know, I, I don't know what the big one is for this one. At uh, South, it was sure it was wonderful. air hockey, and they're always a lot of fun, um, except for space team, and uh, space were you guys team. There that, oh, you guys don't remember the space team one? I don't remember East, space team. A couple years ago, we had a special. So it's the it's this goofy little game, right? Where uh, it was an iOS game, where. Um, each it's a four player game where you each have to like do a certain command on your iPhone, depending on what your role was on the spaceship, on the bridge of the spaceship. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it requires internet connectivity. So we had two teams of four competing and we even had a special build that used us that had its own little Wi-Fi network and it kept dropping connection. Uh. And we finally just awarded both of them the grand prize and gave up. (laughs) So we've learned no more wireless connectivity games. You got to have a wired backup version or something. Right, right. At to, have, have, have I told you about the Omegathon? No. They get they get these Omega knots. You can apply to be an Omega knot, and it's like a competitor. Well, it's 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 um, anyone who pre well uh, when you order your tickets, there's an option to choose whether right. you want to apply, and then we do a random phone call of a uh, few weeks out. Um, you you've Sorry, never I heard of this? It, I, I, I don't, swear I've told you. I remember you about it. seeing that option when, and so, <laughs> when I got the tickets. Yeah, it's, it, it's a pool of folks, and they compete. I can't remember. Is it ten games? I don't. There's a <laughs> round. There's like six or seven rounds of games spanning huh. tabletop to childhood to video to unreleased to, you know, and it. As Jerry says, uh, whoever wins gets the choice to go to any PAX Australia of their choosing. Because <laughs> um, everyone always chooses, right? Pax Australia. The people in Australia, they choose the cash version, um, <laughs> the cash equivalent, because they are they're already in Australia. Right, right. right. Uh, although they could come to you know if they wanted to come out to West or East or South, they could. Um, but yeah, it's it's you know it narrows it down. Uh, you know we've done Jenga and Rock Band and. Uh, boy, we had a really cool custom bookworm adventures version once one year. Uh, just lots of cool games. It's uh, kind of like the ultimate gaming marathon over the span of however many show days the show is. Typically, like there's a big mm-hmm. like cul- like the the final event between like the last two competitors mm-hmm. at South a couple weeks ago was air hockey, just air hockey table, which was. It's like initially. Sometimes you're like, "Oh, it's just air hockey." Everyone's played air hockey. Yeah. But like when it's air hockey for and not only in front of a crowd like that. Yeah. And also for uh for not only bragging rights and then has is it the the guy rug pisser is that his name? Oh, the poor he's, man. He's won. He he's gotten second so, place like three packs in a row. <laughs> the runner up gets to come back and is automatically an omega knot for the huh. next that next pack. So if you're the runner up at South for the next South, you're automatic. And this. Guy has managed to get all the way to the final three years in a row. 
<laughs> so brutal. Oh, yeah. I don't know if he has it in him to do it again. <laughs> and then um, after the Omega, the uh, Omegathon finished, once mm-hmm. the winner was declared, uh, Mike and Jerry threw down at air hockey. And at mm-hmm. one point, there were two pucks on the table. <laughs> It yep. was it was insane. It was beautiful, oh. but also very tense. And I was like, I hope they don't kill each other because you know East is coming up. I'd like to see them. Um, it was beautiful. Though. Yeah, it's 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 fun. We've we've done some really cool. We did like a speed run Zelda once. Um, uh, we we did. I think we was it Halo Two. We showed off like a multiplayer map that had not been released. The game hadn't come out yet. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually had competitive like claw machine once. I remember that one. Round. Your mega claw. It was that turned huge. Out really cool. It was so much fun. Um, yeah, it's 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 a fun, good way to end it, and and everyone it leaves everyone on a high note for the most part, um, except the loser, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess they you know they get a free ride. You know, they just got to compete right. again and have to. Are they, I guess they could just throw it early if they wanted and just enjoy the rest of the show. But where's the honor <laughs> yeah. in that, you know? Where's where's the... Uh, yeah, exactly. Why go all that way? <laughs> but, um, Jeff, I, I know we are a little over on time here, and you're uh, a very busy man. I, I really appreciate you coming on again. Um, uh, what else, uh, PAX is going to be good, and go to PAX, I guess, is the, the summary of... Go to PAX. Um, it's sold out. Go to PAX, it's sold out. Yeah, uh-huh. it's, yeah in, uh, in, in mere moments. I, I was at work when tickets went on sale, and then my phone started blowing up <laughs> um, with about four different people saying they're on sale, and I was like, like a brand new job, so it's not like I could cut out. you know. Like, yep. Come to South, because uh, South, I, I don't know if it's a cultural thing. They, they, don't, uh, they don't sell out as quickly, um, but the venue is fantastic. And, uh, look, I love all of the PAXs. Uh, South in terms of accessibility to hotels and places to eat and uh, uh, margaritas specifically uh, <laughs> is is a, is a lot of fun. And I highly recommend for those who are trying to get like west or east and they always miss out on tickets or whatever, uh, make the trip down in San Antonio. It's uh, it, it is a really good time. Um, you know, doesn't mean you don't have to give it give up east or west if you're able to go to those but i know i know for some they can't they can't swing those tickets so. right right sometimes east is lacking on local places to get food just yeah. around that convention center yeah. man it's it's getting a little <laughs> better like if you you jog across the street there over the the tunnel um you got the whiskey priest <laughs> whiskey priest isn't always worth it <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah I mean, I'll say this, but I'll still eat 90% of my meals at the, uh, oh, what the heck is the name of that bar at the Westin? I know there's MJ Moc- uh, City Bar. City Bar at the Westin, that's what it is. Hmm. I'll end up grabbing a little bite in there. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your appreciated packs. And you guys got to make sure, uh, introduce yourselves to me in person at some point if we don't yeah, schedule um, a time to actually meet up. Hopefully we'll be able to... Um to to at least say hello you know in in person yeah. it, would, it would be uh it would be fantastic jeff i i can't thank you enough for coming on no again worries. giving us your time you know literally no, no, i i appreciate it um you know and part of the reason i do this because i know you guys uh i love your real enthusiasm um <laughs> oh hey thanks and <laughs> i i that's what pax is about pax is about uh, people expressing what they love about this culture you know the whole tagline "Welcome, welcome home." It's a little sappy, but it's true. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it, one of my favorite things to do during AI is um, see all the wonderful, warm things po- people post about the show while it's going on and after it's going on. And and that's why I reached out to you guys when you guys were being joked because I'd seen the genuine fondness you had for the stuff we we pour our hearts and souls into, and uh, your enjoyment is that reward. So I, I really appreciate. Uh, appreciate what you guys bring uh, to to PAX. Uh, we may, you know, we may uh, help get the building ready, but it's not really PAX until you guys show up. So, I just want to say I went. It was just me and Jr. three years ago, mm-hmm. our first one, and uh, and I didn't know what to expect because I've n- I'm not as familiar with Pan Arcade, and I was kind of overloaded with everything that mm-hmm. was going on because I'm just used to comic conventions. 
and mm-hmm. I'm not used to what, everything else that this was and participating so much. And, and then like, I was like, I need some time off and I'll collect <laughs> myself. And then Jared would bring our other co-host friends, Joe and Colin, and they would always come back and they would all have these stories and talk about games and people they met and how cool everyone was. And I'm like, I, I want to go back. <laughs> yeah. You guys make it sound so amazing. I regret not going back again. So. Alex is making his return uh, this year. Well, two packs. Uh, yeah. Don't don't feel like you have to do everything and see everything. Uh, you know, do things at your own pace. Uh, pick out the one or two things that you really want to do, and uh, other than that, just go with the flow, and you'll have a great time. I'll figure out where to pitch uh, my next game of. Expo and convention simulator. <laughs> be... You know what though? That that gets pitched every freaking does it panel. Yeah, <laughs> some <laughs> variation of line manager, <laughs> expo planner, pax sim. Now you got. I'm telling you right now, if you want a chance to succeed, you got a fresh idea. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I'm putting yeah. the pressure on you. Gotcha. Gotcha. I want something fresh. So by I, next by I next week, was... <laughs> you need an idea. Also, to... the best the best ones are. Set up, set up, set up. Title is the punchline. Hmm. Right. So, yep. Yep. If you can come up with a really like a solid gameplay concept that's funny, and then the title pun play on words punchline brings it home, that's that's almost a guaranteed second rounder right there. <laughs> that's gonna get you in. Hmm. Some okay. inside baseball knowledge on how to how to win a <laughs> pitcher game idea. Uh. So in Thank summary. You very much. Uh, Jeff, again, thanks for all the time tonight. Um, go no to PAX worries. and play all the games and trade all the pins. Go to all the panels and watch all the shows. Check out Acquisitions Incorporated um, uh, uh, and see all the amazing things. Um, there we go, logistics. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. This no was an absolute pleasure. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, hunt you down at some point during the weekend next week. I hope everything goes swimmingly, safe flight and all that jazz. Um, yeah, appreciate it. But... Uh, and uh, hopefully, right. hopefully you're able to pick up a switch. But um, yeah, we are <laughs> going to uh, we're going to call it right now. Jeff, thanks again. Um, good packs, and that's all I got. So until all next right. time, uh, I was Jr. I'm Alex. I was Jeff. And this has been episode 259 of Opinions May Vary.